Now, influenza uh, has been a major global health problem, uh, dating back really, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. But one of the first documented pandemics of influenza uh, was the famous pandemic of 1918, which wiped out a huge portion of the population. Over 70 million deaths have been attributed to this particular flu pandemic, which, by the way, is more deaths than were associated with World War I and World War II combined. So this was a major killer back in the early part of the 1900s. And in fact, scenes like this one, in which huge warehouses or even airplane hangars were cleared out and just lined wall to wall with beds with infirm patients who were you know, trying to survive their bout with the flu. This was a common image during that period in history. And movies have been made about this crisis and certainly many books have been written about this crisis. And this was a lesson to humanity that the influenza virus, although many of us get the flu and, and we recover just fine, that this should not be taken lightly. The influenza can be very deadly, particularly for elderly people and for very small children. So for this reason, over the last decade, there's been a lot of work in developing influenza vaccines. And it's been a very difficult problem because, as many of you know, the flu is a highly shifting and changing virus. It can mutate very rapidly so that the strain of flu that we get vaccinated against this year, that strain morphs and changes and next year it's different enough that the vaccine no longer works. For that reason, scientists and physicians are always trying to stay one step ahead of the flu. And every year you go in for another flu shot, which hopefully will protect you from that year's influenza strain, although it might not do much for the subsequent year and so on. But nonetheless, with the advances of the last decade or two, uh, we now have fairly reliable flu shots that we can get every year. And hopefully you go in and, and get your flu shot. And I pulled this image off of the web because I thought you might be interested to hear that the flu vaccine is actually generated in chicken eggs. We use those eggs as little factories to make these vaccines. And what you're looking at here is, is a scientist who's basically injecting eggs with a flu strain that will then propagate within those eggs. Uh, so try and get your flu shot if you can. However, as many of you know who've been paying attention to the news in recent months, uh, just because you get protected against what we think will be next year's flu strain doesn't mean you're protected against all forms of influenza. And one of the most scary features of influenza is that sometimes it has the ability to move from one organism to another. So there are strains of influenza that normally make birds sick, and some of those have been so catastrophic to poultry industries that there's interest in vaccinating chickens against the flu, the same way that we vaccinate ourselves against the flu. But if bird flu gets into a human, it can make that human very sick. And so many of you have probably heard about these local incidents of bird flu uh, in humans. And this is a map showing you where some of those bird flu cases have been identified. So far, the good news about bird flu is that although we might catch it from a bird and get very sick, it doesn't look like we then can transmit it to another human. Now, this is not the case with the most recent scary uh, outbreak of influenza, which has been called the swine flu. This is a flu that's thought to have come from pigs and then moved into humans. It's also called H1N1 influenza. And I'll show you in a minute where those terms come from. But basically, the swine flu can go from pigs to humans, but now it can also go from humans to humans, which means the swine flu is a much bigger risk for a pandemic because of human to human transmission. Fortunately, so far, it looks like it's a fairly mild form of the flu. But there have been many cases reported, most of them in North America, and many of them here in the United States, as you can see from this map.